In this tutorial video, we will cover the basics of FME Workbench 2019 to help you get started creating your own FME workspaces. If you are using an older version of FME, please view our other videos. You will learn how to open FME Workbench, how to read in data, how to visualize your data, how to transform your data, how to write out your data, and finally, how to save your workspace. Let's go over the scenario for this tutorial. We have been requested to take a file containing businesses and put each business on a map to visualize the business corridors. We have a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet containing businesses and their license numbers. We want to create a data set containing points on a map with just the business name and locations. We will create a workspace to do this for us. So let's get started. Start by opening FME Workbench. In Windows, go to Start, then FME Desktop 2019, then open the FME folder, and browse to FME Workbench 2019. To do this in a Mac operating system, go to Applications, FME 2019, and then FME Workbench. This video will be filmed in Windows, but the FME functionality is the same across platforms. The first time you open FME, it might take a bit to load because it is checking the license. When FME opens, if you have just installed FME for the first time, Workbench Essentials will pop up. This is the same content that this video covers. You can close it for now, but then you can come back to it later by clicking on the Workbench Essentials button or by going to Help Workbench Essentials. Let's start a new workspace. Click on the New button, which will create a blank workspace. This area is referred to as the canvas. The canvas is where all of the objects in the workspace will be contained. Now before we go any further, take a moment to download the provided data so that you can follow along. Great! Now that you have the data, let's explore it a bit. Find the downloaded data in your file browser, and then drag and drop it into FME. An Add Reader dialog will appear. A reader is an object in FME that reads in the data. When you drag and drop data into FME, the reader is automatically populated with the format name. It is a good idea to double check that the format is correct, as there are sometimes different format types for the same file extension. The dataset is the data that you are reading in. You can also browse to the dataset by clicking on the ellipsis button. The Parameters button is for additional parameters that can be set for this format. If there is an exclamation point on the Parameter button, this means that there are mandatory parameters. It's always a good idea to double check the parameters, even if there isn't an exclamation point. For this Excel file, there are no mandatory parameters to set, but we can confirm that the column names are being read in correctly, as well as the type of data. Click OK to close the parameters. The final thing to set in the Add Reader dialog is the coordinate system. FME can automatically determine the coordinate system if one exists in the dataset. This will be indicated by the text Read from Source in the Coordinate System box. If there is no coordinate system, the box will say Unknown and you have the option to set one if you know the coordinate system. Excel files do not have a coordinate system associated with it, so for this example we will set it to LL84 which is the Latitude and Longitude Coordinate System. The Workflow Options are a more advanced topic that will not be covered in this video. If you are interested in learning more, search Workflow Options in the documentation. For now, just ensure that the options are set to individual feature types. Now press OK to add the reader to the canvas. Once you click OK on the Add Reader dialog, a reader feature type will appear on the canvas. A feature type defines the schema of the data being read as well as the layers that the data possesses. For this example, using the Excel dataset, you can think of a feature type as an individual sheet within the Excel workbook. Now that we have the Excel file added as a reader, we want to investigate our data further to know what we are working with. We can do this inside of FME Workbench. First, we need to run the workspace to create a data cache that can be inspected. On the top menu bar, click on the drop-down arrow next to the Run button. Ensure that Enable Feature Caching is turned on, 
and then disable Prompt for User Parameters. Prompt for User Parameters is a more advanced topic that we will not be covering in this video. With feature caching enabled, we can now run the workspace. Click on the green play button to do this. The workspace will run and the data will be cached on the reader. This cache is indicated by a green magnifying glass icon. To view this cache, click on the magnifying glass icon, and this will open up Visual Preview. Visual Preview is a new feature for FME 2019 that allows the data to be viewed within FME Workbench. This window is similar to FME Data Inspector, only with less functionality. It allows you to quickly view your data at any point in the translation to ensure that it is correct or to help you determine what you need to do next in order to get your desired output. There are three parts to viewing data using Visual Preview in FME. Each part allows the user to view their data in different ways. The table view displays the dataset's visible attributes. These attributes can be sorted or searched to explore your data. To toggle this view, click on the Table button on the left-hand side of the window. If your dataset has a spatial component, graphic, geometry, or coordinate values, like latitude and longitude, Visual Preview will display the graphics or geometry in the Graphics view. If there are no graphics or geometry, this view will not be available. To toggle this view, click on the Graphics button. The Feature Information view is where any additional information about a feature can be found, including format-specific attributes and coordinate systems. To toggle this view, click the Show Hide Feature Information button. Now that we know how Visual Preview works, let's explore the Excel data. It looks like we need to rename the first attribute to match the last name attribute. As well, we want to clean up the data by moving last name to the first column position, as well as removing license number. Now that we have visualized our data and know how we want to manipulate it, we need to use a transformer. A transformer is an object that manipulates data in a specific way. Each transformer has its own unique function and can be strung together in a series to achieve complex tasks. There are lots of transformers to choose from to help you complete your desired task. There are also multiple ways to find a transformer. One of the ways to find a transformer is from within FME Workbench. You can open the Transformer Gallery by going to View, Windows, Transformer Gallery. You can also open the Help window to get the descriptions of each transformer. Additionally, you can view the Transformer Gallery online at www.safe.com transformers. In both versions of the Transformer Gallery, transformers can be searched by name or filtered by category. For example, if you were looking to modify attributes, you can filter by the Attributes category. In the website version, Transformer descriptions are provided to help you narrow down the search, as well as list similar transformers or related resources to help you learn how to use the transformer. Now let's go back to FME Workbench to add a transformer. Click anywhere on the canvas and start typing Attribute Manager. When you start typing, the Quick Add dialog will appear. From this dialog, transformers, readers, and writers can be added by just typing their name. Once the Attribute Manager appears, Click Enter on your keyboard, or double-click on the name with your mouse to add it to the canvas. To use the transformer, it must be connected to the workflow. Click on the output arrow of the reader feature type and drag it to the input arrow on the Attribute Manager transformer. When they are connected correctly, a line will appear between them. Additionally, once they are connected, attributes from earlier in the workspace can be accessed within the transformer. With the Attribute Manager connected, we need to modify the parameters. Almost every transformer has parameters that need to be set. If a transformer has mandatory parameters, the cog wheel on the transformer will be red. If the transformer has parameters, but they have not been viewed yet, and they are not mandatory, the cog wheel will be yellow. If the cog wheel is blue, the parameters have been reviewed. Double-click anywhere on the Attribute Manager to open the parameters. In the Attribute Manager Parameters dialog, there will be a list of input attributes. These are the attributes from the reader feature type. If you do not see any attribute names, ensure that the reader feature type and the Attribute Manager are connected. 
Now click on the box containing first under the output attribute column and rename it to first name. When you edit the name, you will notice that the action has changed in the action column from do nothing to rename. Now click on the last name row and at the bottom of the table, click the up arrow to move the last name up one row. This will change the order in which the attributes appear in the final output. Finally, click on the license number row and click the minus sign under the table to remove the row entirely. Notice that the action has changed to remove. If you accidentally remove a row, change the action to do nothing to bring it back. Once you are satisfied with your changes, click OK to close the dialog. Now that all the data has been manipulated with the transformer, it needs to be written out. Let's add a writer to the canvas. Click on Writers, Add Writer on the top menu bar. The Add Writer dialog will look similar to the Add Reader dialog, but this time we will need to set everything up. You can type in the format that you are looking for or browse the format if you are unsure of the naming convention. We will be writing to Esri Shapefile, so type in Shapefile into the Format Input box, and then select Esri Shapefile when it appears. Next, choose a location to save the dataset. Depending on the format, you might also have to input a file name. Click on the ellipsis button and then browse to your Documents folder. Create a new folder called Data Output and then select it as the location to save the file to. The Esri shapefile format does not require a file name to be set, only a folder. Just like the reader, there are specific parameters for each format. Click on the Parameters button. If you want to learn more about a format's parameters, you can click on the Help button at the bottom of the dialog and it will open the documentation for that format. For the Esri shapefile, there are no parameters for us to set and you can click OK to close the Parameters dialog if you have opened it. The writer will keep the coordinate system that was in the original dataset or set during the workspace. If you would like the output dataset to be in a different coordinate system, you can enter the desired coordinate system in the Chord System box to reproject when the workspace is run. We will just leave this blank. The feature type definition determines how the writer feature types will be created. To have the output attributes reflect what was done in the workspace, select Automatic. To manually select what attributes are written out, choose Manual. For this example, set the shapefile definition to automatic and then click OK to add the writer to the canvas. This will ensure that our output format will have the same schema or structure that we modified with the attribute manager. When you set the feature type definition to automatic in the add writer dialog, the details about the feature type name will need to be defined. After clicking the OK button in the add writer dialog, a feature type dialog appears. In this dialog, you will need to set the feature type name. This will be the name of the layer or worksheet Set the shapefile name to Businesses and then click OK. There are no other parameters to be set. Once the writer has been added to the canvas, it needs to be connected to the workflow. Click on the output port of the Attribute Manager and drag to connect it to the writer feature type input port. Once it is connected, the attributes that will be written out can be seen. The final step in creating any workspace in FME is to run the workspace. Running the workspace initiates the flow of data from a reader through any transformers to writing the data out to disk with a writer. To run a workspace, click on the Run button. Before clicking it, if you mouse over the button, a green highlight will appear around all of the objects on the canvas that will be executed when the Run button is clicked. Which objects will be run is useful to know if you are testing a workspace and have made any changes recently. Once you have seen which objects will be run, click on the Run button. After the workspace has been run, there are two main ways to tell if it was successful. The first way is to see the feature count numbers flowing through the workspace. There should be at least one feature moving from each object. With our example, there should be 171 features coming from the Attribute Manager. The second way is to look for the Translation was successful message at the bottom of FME Workbench in the Translation Log window. This message will also note how many warnings there were and how many features were written out. The features that were written out should directly reflect the feature count numbers going into the writer. If the translation log doesn't automatically pop up when the workspace is run, you can access it from View, 
Windows, Translation Log. Once you have saved your workspace, a saved version of the translation log can be accessed in the same folder as your workspace. This allows you to view the translation log in a text editor, if desired. Once it has been confirmed that the translation was successful, it is a good idea to confirm the output by either opening the output file in that format's native software, or by using Visual Preview within FME. To view the final output data, click on the Businesses Writer Feature Type to show the pop-up menu. On the pop-up menu, click on the View Written Data button. This will open the data in the Visual Preview window. Here you can observe the attribute changes. See how the last name attribute is now in the first column, and the first name attribute is named correctly. Also, business licenses have been removed. Notice that the Esri shapefile format does not accept spaces in the attribute names, so FME adds underscores to replace the spaces automatically. Before closing FME Workbench, or before starting a new workspace, be sure to save the FME Workspace by clicking on the floppy disk icon, or go to File, Save. This will save the workspace as an FMW file. This FMW file will only have the workspace schema in it and will not contain any data. To save the workspace with data, it needs to be saved as a template. To do this, go to File, Save as Template. In this template dialog, it will list the data that will be included with the workspace. Congratulations, you have successfully created your first FME workspace. To continue your success, take one of our free online training courses, or find topic-specific tutorials on our knowledge base. We are also here to help. If you get stuck along the way or have any questions, talk to one of our experts on live chat or post your question in our online community.